here are the slides. ORMO2, um, and let's, uh, let's jump in. So um, for those of you who are, may not be familiar with the, the capabilities of the ORM itself, uh, it's basically a 2D and 3D intraoperative imaging device. It has uh, this unique attribute of having a breakable gantry so that it can access the patient laterally. You can come in, close the gantry over the patient, and then spin your radiation source and detector around that, that gantry. Um, there is automatic registration capability built into this platform, and this was really one of the disruptive uh, features of 3D, intraoperative 3D imaging, because prior to this, there was a painstaking registration process that was necessary. This made it completely automatic and, and fully, uh, fully reliable. Um, the system is mobile, so many of our users take the ORM, move it from one operating room to another while the first uh, procedure is, is ongoing. Uh, first time I saw the device was probably back in 2003 before we acquired uh, the company. And what struck me at the time was that this was a device that was built for surgical imaging, for spinal surgical imaging, in fact. Um, and so when you, when you look at how it's used today, most people will use it in, in one of really two modes, uh, either as input to a uh, preoperative or in, input to a navigation system with that automatic registration capability or confirmation uh, and or both. Um, but it's also capable of performing standard fluoroscopy. Um, and, and so the device has, uh, has really lived up to uh, our expectations of it. The second generation device and the features I'm gonna talk about today, uh, first uh, radiation exposure reduction, we'll, we'll talk about each of these in detail, um, a significantly expanded field of view going from a 20 centimeter to a 40 centimeter uh, field of view, um, the ability to incorporate uh, stereotactic frames with, with the larger field of view, you can now consider this for functional neurosurgical procedures, uh, some changes in the indications, uh, there's some workflow enhancements, and, and really the thing that I find most exciting is some of the internals here uh, have been adapted so that what we can bring to the market in the future um, is, is quite exciting. And I'll talk a little bit about what's, uh, what's coming there as well. So here's an example of uh, a, an image on the left with uh, our standard protocol, image on the right with low dose mode. So this takes about uh, twice as long to, to process, but it's half the dose. Um, it is also using a faster computer than what was available on the previous generation of the ORM, but this is a trend, and this trend is, is going to continue. This reduced radiation exposure while either maintaining or potentially improving image quality. Um, the, the multiple field of view, so uh, on the bottom there, you can see a full pelvic image. We heard a little bit about uh, trauma, and we certainly have some uh, surgeons who are using this for pelvic trauma procedures, and on the top you see a stereotactic frame. Uh, the, way, the way we do that, if you look on the, the left, you see our radiation source on the top, the detector on the bottom, uh, and, and that circles around the patient on the, on the right side. Um, that has been offset, uh, about uh, offset from, from the center, and there is an embedded video in there, which isn't working, but the video just shows the thing uh, spinning around, so we'll, we'll kind of skip over that. But, but by offsetting the flat, excuse me, the flat panel detector, we get twice uh, the, the working volume. An another new enhancement to the system is this ability to uh, find the isocenter of your image uh, much, e much more easily than was capable before. So uh, typically the radiology tech would have to take an AP and a lateral, move things a little inferior, you know, take a new, a new lateral to make sure they'd gone far enough, figure out how to get to the midline. With this new capability, uh, they take one AP, one lateral, and then as they move the gantry, uh, the system automatically tracks where the, well, again, the, the simulations aren't seeming to work here, but what you would see is um, the, are, are you using the PDF by any chance? They're probably using the, 
PDF, yeah, okay. Um, and so uh, what, what you would see is that as things are moving, it would indicate where in the apian lateral that isocenter are gonna be, so there's no additional radiation exposure to the patient as you're lining up the system to get that perfect 3D image. Make sense? Um, okay, uh, indications for use. Um, so uh, while there weren't uh, there wasn't a lot of uh, technology change that, that went into this. There was a lot of work in terms of data collection and evidence generation, basically um, giving us the ability to promote this for pediatric patients weighing 60 pounds uh, or greater and having an abdominal thickness greater than uh, 16 centimeters. So uh, we can now promote the ORM uh, for on-label use for the typical uh, pediatric scoliosis patient, which we weren't able, able to do in the past. And, and again, I wanna reiterate, a great deal of work goes into getting these kinds of indications that uh, isn't necessarily uh, seen. It's, it's kind of the behind the scenes work that, that we do within, uh, within industry. Um, so I'm gonna transition now to uh, some future, uh, future scope. Um, it, they really don't have the, uh, the, the PowerPoint, you don't have the PowerPoint, huh? Because I got a lot of, a lot of, uh, let's see if they can get it up and running. Um, so what that slide said was that everything you're about to see has not been cleared by the, the FDA, uh, number one, and it may or may not ever come to market, but uh, we're gonna tease you with it anyway. So, um, so and, and it, it's really the changes that have been made in the underlying uh, uh, radiation, uh, flat panel detector in the source, in the computing hardware that allow us to do uh, some of the things that hopefully we'll be able to show you here. Looks like it's coming up. I'm seeing some nods. Okay, that's what, that's what it looks like when it's rotating. There we go. Uh, and, and this is what this thing looks like. Uh, all right, so let's kind of, all right, so Again, I, I, I made that, that point clear. All right, so the first thing um, that, uh, that we, we've certainly heard from, from customers, from surgeons, is that it would be nice to be able to reconcile sagittal balance or, or other measures intraoperatively. And, and so one of the capabilities that we have already prototyped, and I just saw some images coming out of this the other day, is the ability to slide the gantry automatically automatically stitch those together into, into a long film reconstruction so you have something uh, like that, that image on the uh, upper right there. Uh, and then being able to take that image while the patient's still on the table, uh, take your, your alignment measures, have some annotation features to, to measure angles, and be able to de determine did you achieve the degree of correction that you wanted. In this case, laterally, but um, you can do this uh, you know, AP or, or lateral. So this one, I'm, I'm pretty confident uh, you know, at some point will be available. This is, this is something that um, we have certainly demonstrated the, the, the feasibility of this. Um, and then you can take that concept and, and extend it to 3D. So right now, the ORM is capable of uh, 15 centimeter long acquisitions, um, but you can essentially do that same trick uh, in, in 3D, take a scan, move the gantry, take another scan, stitch them together, and potentially put uh, three of those together to get nearly 45 centimeter uh, scan in 3D if, if, uh, if that would be valuable. And again, the technology is, is very, very far along um, for that capability. Um, another thing that uh, we, we heard uh, Dr. Lieberman talking about uh, planning, and one of the, the areas that we've been interested in for, for quite some time is how do you automate the planning process? Um, so we, we certainly, when we talk to spine surgeons about uh, their receptivity to planning, uh, most spine surgeons will spend 15 seconds in, in the OR, you know, figuring something out. But uh, we've been doing a, a fair bit of work on how do you automate uh, the planning of a, a, a pedicle screw trajectory, and, and how do you potentially even learn over time what a given surgeon's preferences are so that, uh, you know, Dr. Drazen may like his screws more medial than, you know, Dr. Fisher, and so how does, how does the system take that into account? Um, so there's a, a fair bit of work going on there. 
the the work on the right um, is is also very interesting. So we've heard a lot about uh, the importance of radiation exposure reduction. We we heard about a lot of people who don't do a post op confirmation spin. And I imagine that one of the reasons for that lack of post-op confirmation spin is concern about radiation exposure to the patient. So one of the capabilities that we are working on, and this one is, is a little bit uh, more in feasibility stage at this point, is the capability to take a few projection images, um, greatly reducing the radiation exposure to create a 3D reconstruction uh, of your, your patient based on the initial pre-op OARM spin, knowledge of the screws themselves, uh, and these, these uh, uh, projection images, basically fluoro images, to give you a full axial uh, 3D view of where those screws are located at about a tenth to potentially even a hundredth the radiation exposure that would be uh, otherwise possible. So this is something where we're very uh, excited about and there's a lot of work going on internally uh, in this area. Um, and then the final thing that I, that I wanna leave you with is uh, what, what you see here is a, an image of the same uh, cranial head phantom um, which is reconstructed on the top with fairly standard techniques and on the bottom with some fairly advanced uh, techniques. And, and the, the techniques on the bottom are not currently being used in practice, at least in, in the ORM, because as you see, those reconstruction times take uh, tens of minutes in this case. Okay, um, in, in diagnostic CT, you do have that workflow uh, flexibility to be able to take 10 minutes to do a reconstruction. You can't do that in an intraoperative situation. However, computers are getting faster all the time. We're getting more intelligent about the way the reconstructions are being done. And so we believe that cone beam uh, CT, of which uh, the, the, the ORM is a, is a representative, will eventually be comparable to uh, fan beam or conventional diagnostic CT in contrast resolution. Um, and, and so this, it's, it's really just a matter of time. It's really just a matter of time as computer power increases as software uh, reconstruction algorithms improve. Um, so on that note, I will thank you for your attention.